Welcome to our little studio hour. Should our intro be? I don't know. Do we need an intro? I don't think we need an intro. We don't need an intro? We don't need an intro. To a Q&A? Welcome to we the Q&A. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our to Q&A. Q &A. <laughs> this is Frank. I'm Holly. That's right. Great. So, a lot of people probably already know that, so... Yes. Yes, people... No need to spend time on that. Great. <laughs> they probably have better questions than what's your name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we have our some questions here that you guys have asked, and we'll just go through them and answer them mm -hmm. for fun. So, first question is, how long have you been together? We've been together for two years, mm -hmm. right? Just about, yeah. Coming up on two years? Coming up on two years, yeah. When is today? January something. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Because it was February. Yeah. So yeah. You know, depending on what you, people have different dates. I think they use to base that off of. But I would say about two years. Um, what do you base it off of, Frank? When you ask me to be your girlfriend? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Um, how did you meet? Well, we met at a mutual friends event. Um, unbeknownst to each other that we were going to be there because we didn't really didn't know each other at all before then and uh, so Frank was on a work trip mm -hmm. um, you were coming back from a work trip in LA mm -hmm. and I um, we have a mutual friend together and I had randomly chosen a weekend to come down to Atlanta because I'm from Wisconsin originally and just to visit her, see her, hang out with her, and we just, her between her and I, we just randomly chose this certain weekend. Uh, she had an event going on that weekend, and so I told her, I'm like, hey, I'm in the area, I can help you out with your event, and attend it, and assist in any way that needs to be helped with, I guess, at her event. And, yeah, and she yeah. obviously invited you because mm -hmm. you guys knew each other for, for years. A yeah. And you had worked together before. Mm -hmm. So, and you, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think neither one of us knew the other person or the fact that we would be at that event. No. That just kind of I didn't happened. even know you existed on this planet. Right, same. So. So. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh... So, but you, um, so Frank was coming back from his work trip, and you had said that you didn't even want to go to the event. I was thinking you were tired, about. Right? I had I had said I would come, but I was kind of tired from the whole trip. But I felt committed to going since I had said that I would go. So I went. We love a man with follow through. Yeah. I like that. No bailing at the last minute. No, I can't bail at the last minute once you said you'd be there. So I agree. It wasn't a good I, reason. I don't like people that don't have good follow through. I think yeah. it's I think it's rude. Yeah. Yeah. So started talking there and that was at least our first I was at the heat lamp because I was frozen. So you this was cold. in December. Yeah. And I'm I generally run cold and so I like being warm, even though I'm from Wisconsin. I know I get it. Um, but I don't like being cold, and so I had the owners of the place bring out heat lamps because I was freezing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hanging around the heat lamps, and I um, when you walk, when you came to the event, it was actually just before it was starting. Like mm -hmm. you showed up um, just as they were like kind of like wrapping yeah, things up to, right before the event was beginning. Right. Um, and since I was there at the event helping my friend. Uh, she had asked me prior to the event if I would help be a guest judge um, for the event. So that was, you know, a nice little fun little honor. And then when you arrived, you saw me at the heat lamp. I think you introduced yourself. And mm -hmm. you, I think you said, I don't remember what you said, but I think you said hi. 
Yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember what you said. said. Yeah, but I remember Small when you walked away because Frank was also a guest judge at the same event, and I remember when you walked away. I was like, "Oh, well, that's a nice guy." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were fun to talk to. And but that was kind of it. You know, it wasn't like. Yeah, it was more of a the stars normal... aligned, the sea parted, and whatever. No, I think it was more <laughs> of a normal interaction. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing like out of the ordinary. Yeah, I, like, I just remember I was like, oh, well, you're kind of nice. Yeah. You know? It's just, okay, cool. Yeah. And it was funny because we, um, we ended up sitting next to each other when we were judging mm-hmm. this event. And I remember Frank, um, he asked me, like, to compare our judging scores, and we actually judged the exact same. Mm-hmm which was kind of interesting, so then we kind of got started talking that way. Right. Yeah. Because we both apparently have great taste. Apparently. Or at least we think we do. We think we have great taste. About each other. (laughs) We think we (laughs) We think we have great taste. That's so great. Yeah. Anyways. So. So, okay, next question. How long did you date before you were boyfriend and girlfriend? Um, well, probably a couple months at least, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, three or four. Yeah, so like we that. we just talked for months. Um, I I'm a very independent person, and like I was never looking for a guy to like make my life complete or happy or anything because like. I'm good. Like, I'm very independent. I have my own things happening. Um, And generally, I wasn't, like, looking for a guy necessarily. Um, I had sort of come to terms with... I kind of gave up on dating, actually, before I met Frank, just because I was single for seven years, and then I would go on dates here and there and meet people, of course, but nothing ever turned into anything decent or good or anything like that. I would say, and I would, I just kind of came to terms with the fact that, you know, I'm like, I'm good. I'm happy with myself. I'm doing what I want to be doing. I'm just continually pursuing my own goals and I'm okay being Holly and being single. And I just, I, I was mentally, I came to terms with the fact that I might not find someone and that, and that I was okay with that. So yeah. And so that happened like probably a few months before that event that we met at. And then we just were talking, you know, mm-hmm. for weeks, I think. Um, yeah. And initially not that much. It no. More like, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. Frank sent me a Christmas card. Mm-hmm. And the only other person who sent me a Christmas card was my, my dad, my parents. And so I had, at my apartment, I had two Christmas cards, and they were both in red envelopes, and Frank and my dad have similar handwriting, and I remember getting my mail, and they were both sitting there, and I was just thinking, I'm like, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, so Frank wants to send me a Christmas card. How sweet. How Mm -hmm. thoughtful. Both got the red envelopes on sale. That's that's probably (laughs) probably what it was. Was that it? Maybe. I don't know. You got a good deal on your Christmas cards? Yeah. Um, where are you from? Well, you already said that. You're from... I was born and raised in Wisconsin, yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and Frank has more of an interesting story, so I'll let you. Yeah, take the I was floor. born in Germany, but moved to California with my parents when I was very young. So it's an international experience. Frank, Frank has a very fun international upbringing. Yeah. <laughs> so you speak German. Mm-hmm. Do you speak any other languages? You speak well, a little little French and Italian, don't you? Yeah, just what I know from school, but enough mm-hmm. to get by when I travel there. But. So what school were you in? I well, different schools, but it, um, when we were living in Germany for a while. When I was a teenager, I went to a German-American school where you spoke German and English. So you were able to keep and learn 
both languages. So that's was that the cool. was that the private school or was that in LA? No, it wasn't a private school, but it was a school in Germany that was focused on um, like international students that's or students with an international background. So so fancy, Frank. Yeah, it was a fun. Ex you got to know a lot of different people from different areas. So sounds fun, actually. Um. What is a special place you've been to together? Well, I guess that depends on your definition of the word special, but obviously we went to... So we have... We went to Germany. Mm, uh, we've been to Europe a few times. A few times. Um, so Frank took me to the Ritz in Berlin in this really like... It's just this really old, really fancy hotel they resold it now, so it was the former Yeah, it's gone Ritz. through a, a number of different owners or franchises, I think. But it was yeah. the Ritz at one point. It was the Ritz. They still have kept all the, like, they still have the original Ritz, like the lions on the staircases. Mm -hmm. Everything is so, like, fancy. Um, it's just a gorgeous hotel. I think it's the Sch Schlossmann. I can't say that right. Schlossmann I think it's Hotel? Schloss Hotel Berlin. Schloss Hotel. I can't say it right. Yeah. Frank says it better than I do. Um, but anyway, so a special place for us would be the Ritz, mm -hmm. which you have a lot more history than, than our history with that place. So uh, when we were in Berlin the, for the first time, he took me to the former Ritz Hotel, mm -hmm. and we went to the little lounge area where mm -hmm. you can get, you know, fancy drinks. They have, you know, little snacks. You can eat food there. They had live music. There's a fireplace. It's just like this really quaint, very like, how do you say it? Like very fancy, but small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a more of an intimate, intimate setting. It's yeah, not so big. It, it was really, really nice. And that's probably one of my favorite places in mm -hmm. Berlin is that place. Um, so we had like a nice little date night there, mm -hmm. and um, I'll let Frank tell you all of his history with the Ritz. Oh, well, we, when I was <laughs> younger, um, with my brother or my friends, we used to go there more often. So we, we would hang out there to have a drink or eat something on a more regular basis. So they got... They were there every Friday night so at they, the Ritz, so getting they, the club sandwich, and what was mm -hmm. it, the Soul Kiss was the drink? Yeah, was they had a few drink? different cocktails that, that so were kind nice. of signature for for that um for that place but yeah they so they knew frank and his they already brother knew our orders after yeah. a while but yeah it was a nice place frank to was the regular at the ritz hang out yeah what was your story with jayla there oh she was there for an event i think and we happened to see her because she, she frank was there. bumped into jayla at <laughs> the the ritz bar when she was there performing and they weren't they weren't letting anyone else in because it's obviously J Lo, but they let Frank in and his brother because they were there like yeah they weekend. knew us regular <laughs> so she was at the buffet customers. with J Lo and was talking to her and what a random story mm -hmm. anyways the point of the Ritz the Ritz is a very special place for us in very meaningful ways in different ways obviously he has a lot of history there. Um, and then he took me there a few times, and it's just a really special place. And also, on a side note, the club sandwich at the Ritz, mm -hmm. he would always get every Friday. And so they actually still have the same menu when we went there um, yeah. together. And so we... Or at least that's still on the menu. We ordered the... Yeah, the club sandwich is still on the menu at the Ritz in Berlin, and they're the original one. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the new Ritz in Berlin, if they have the same club not, sandwich. I've not checked there. Anyways, the club sandwich at the Ritz is the best club sandwich you will ever have. Mm -hmm. I can confirm this because I ate it and I, I understand now. Mm -hmm. The Ritz does not mess around. Which is a good segue <laughs> to the question about food that you got. <clears throat> mm. Do you both eat similar foods? How do you manage meals together? I would say we both generally eat pretty healthy most of the time. Mm -hmm. We definitely have our moments where we like little snacks, little treats. We definitely eat junk food, but I think that overall, like 
would you say 80% of our food or 90% is pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. We try to do a lot of organic foods. We try to do, we try not to do too much meat, um, like red meat and that kind of thing. And we don't really do too much dairy. Like I don't even drink dairy milk. That's not really something I do. So we usually like a lot of fresh, healthy, organic foods. We do, we do a lot of soups. A staple for me is chicken noodle. Um, mm -hmm. we started making it without the chicken to be a little bit more healthy. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you have any input on that? Frank well, makes we, a lot of food and he's we try to a secret cook chef, at home a lot. Like we don't really go out that much. No, we like to do like a date night and go mm -hmm. out and do that kind of thing. But we also really like cooking food at home. Mm-hmm. And doing yeah. that kind of thing. So Frank makes pretty... a lot of salad, a lot of soups. You have your European, your um, your German yeah, the, like veggie soup, soup that you make. There's not really that much we need to consider when we're cooking together or for each other. Yeah, it's not like we, we usually... have vastly different diets. Or yeah, so it works out like really well because we kind of eat similar things, mm -hmm. anyways. Um, I mean, I have a soft spot for the the ruffles. Cheddar sour cream chips, mm -hmm. those are so good every time. They're so good, I can't say no. And I like, you know, brownies, chocolate chip cookies, that kind of thing. Yeah. Frank loves potato chips. So They're we good, definitely but... do, you know, splurge on a few things here and there, we like little snacks and stuff. But I think with anything, I think um, if you do things within reason, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Just as long as, like, if all you're eating are bags of potato chips. Like you're gonna have a really bad health history and a health outcome later on in your life, I think. So I think it's just mm -hmm. important to yeah. eat healthy. So really, it's not really hard for us to manage meals. No, no, it's pretty simple. It's actually very easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Which animal would you be based on personality? I um, I feel like Frank is, I mean, Frank should be very easy for me, honestly, but I feel like Frank is kind of like an otter. I just think otters are so cute. I don't know, like, Frank is an amazing human being, the most amazing human being I've ever met personally. He's just like a really good person overall really cares about other human beings, really like has good integrity, great character. Um, I don't know, I think an otter, otters are just like, they're cute, they're fun, generally they're nice, they're, they swim fast in the water, they like to slide on slides, and Frank is like a professional driver and he, he, can go, he likes going really fast in his cars and all of that kind of stuff. And otters, like, otters are just really cute. They, like, they'll, like, almost, like, hug their mate and they'll sleep together and they'll have, like, one mate for life. And I just think that's, like, so sweet. I don't know why you make me think of an otter. You just do kind of, sort of. That's I don't know. Weird. I thought about eagle, too, because you're, you're extremely mm. smart. You're very intelligent and witty. And so I feel like you have, like, a few parts of different animals, like an eagle, otter... I think you're, you're cozy. I think you're like a cat. Those <laughs> cats are, um, they like being curled up in a cozy area with a fire, which you like to be. But they're also very particular about their surroundings and their the people they interact with. You have to build up a lot of trust with a cat for it to come out of its shell, but then once you do that, they're very loyal and they're very caring. So I feel like that's... Did I did I make you work for it, Frank? I didn't feel like you did, but you seem to think that you did. I, I definitely feel like I made Frank work for it. Not on purpose. It was... Not that I wasn't interested in Frank. I thought he was a very nice man, but... I just wasn't in the headspace and was, like, looking to date anyone. And I had so much, like history with like just dating and guys and I was just so over the whole thing and I was just I always was looking for like hey where's the guy who like actually wants to get to know me where's the guy who actually wants to stick around 
and like share their life with me. I, maybe I had really high expectations, I don't know, but I knew what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And I can say that I found him. Yeah. What inspires you most about the respective other person? What inspires me most about you, Frank? I really value your um, your honesty. I feel like I feel like you're such a good human being that I don't I don't know. I feel like I feel like you inspire me to care more about other human beings, and that sounds so bad. That sounds so bad. It sounds like I don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just I feel like you put so much emphasis and focus on follow through and making sure that other people, you know, leave an interaction with you on a, in a, a positive way. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like you're just like a really intelligent, very organized, you have it all together, human being. You treat others with respect. I just, I, I value that. Mm -hmm. And I, I respect that in you. I, I think those are really good qualities to have. So. I think I'm inspired by your honesty, the fact that you always say what's on your mind. I'm especially too honest. Especially when it's, it's something more critical or something that's bothering you. Like a lot of people don't have the confidence to do that, but you you are good at expressing how you're feeling but also putting it in work, not just saying, I feel this way, but explaining, you know, the reasons why, be it good or bad. So not everybody is, is good at that, but you are. Oh, that's sweet, Frank. I def that is definitely a trait of mine. I will definitely tell people what I'm honestly thinking. Sometimes it's, you know, not always great, but I just, I can't, I can't not say what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good quality. I just, I need to, I need people to know. Yeah. How did you know you wanted to date each other? What stood out to you when you were in the transition period of talking before you started dating? What stood out for me when we were in the interim months before we dated, Frank was just very, um, a, you're a very stable human being. And what I mean by that is, um, I, I noticed that when I was with Frank, when I was talking to him, when we were spending time together, he was so respectful of me and my personal space and my boundaries, and I felt very safe, and I felt very comfortable like being around you. I didn't feel pressured to do anything. You never made me feel like I had to be doing something or I had to, you know be a certain way, like Frank just let me be me, and I feel like that really stood out to me. I was just, it made me like want to hang out with you more because I felt safe around you. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy. I think what we didn't know until later um, was that we had both been living on our own for quite a bit of time. And I think what stood out to me was you you weren't necessarily looking for someone. You were just very confident and comfortable living life by yourself. And I think that um, that made you um, stand out in that someone was going to have to compliment that somehow um, because you didn't, you weren't looking for someone per se. Because I didn't necessarily you were, need anybody. Yeah, you yeah. were comfortable in your in your own space, doing your own thing, and that, that seemed very striking. That stood out to me. A woman that knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stands out. Um, what do you do to show each other you care about each other? I think for me it's a lot of the, um, you know, people often think of these like lavish gifts or going on trips or stuff, but I think which we do do those. Yeah, we do that once but in a while, but I think more scary. important it's it's like the day to day situations where you can make a difference for somebody, like making coffee or 
cooking or bringing home like some flowers or just remembering to do like doing certain things that just make life easier um like I errands or shopping or you know whatever every day like getting groceries yeah that too I tell Frank that he's my favorite because he is <laughs> So for me, I think it's, for me, I think it's uh, like, yeah, like more, I guess some some people call them acts of service, Mm -hmm. but I try to do a lot of those. I feel like that's that's your love language, is acts of service. I I feel like that's you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what my love language is, I don't know. Um, Being loved. (laughs) Being, being happy. Yeah. Um, Paying attention to me. <laughs> what's been the hardest thing about your relationship? Mm. To be fair, I think I think overall our relationship is very easy. Mm-hmm. We don't argue really about anything. No, I think it was more. You were saying this. It was more um, like getting to that place because obviously we were living in different areas so yeah so I, I think yeah the hardest part was definitely for, was, was for really, me was moving was moving yeah and like leaving what I had known and coming you know to where I am now that mm-hmm. whole transition was a lot and it you know I didn't move for you I moved for warmer weather I moved for work mm-hmm. that kind of thing it was just like a side bonus that we were talking also. we happen to have gotten to know yeah. each other yeah yeah so it kind of just like everything kind of worked out. Right. Because I was thinking about moving years before I met you anyways. And so it just kind of, everything kind of just flowed and kind of was just very easy. So it was all very interesting mm-hmm. how everything worked out. But I think that's when you know that you have a good relationship and you know you're with the right person is when it's very easy. Mm-hmm. And... You don't really argue that much, or really ever. I don't think we've ever really had a huge argument or anything, because you respect the other person so much that you don't want to do or say anything that you would feel. Or you know, at least awful when you later. when you have a, a difference of opinion or a disagreement, that you talk about it constructively. I think mm-hmm. just, everyone's going to argue at some point, but it's about also about how you do that. I agree. Um, and I think another, it's not necessarily hard, but if you're, um, if you're, if you meet someone or you, you living with someone and you haven't before, then that takes, you just have to kind of change, not necessarily change your routine, but get used to the other person being in your space if you didn't have that before. So mm-hmm. that just takes some getting used to, but that's normal. And going from being single for so long to dating, it's, it's interesting because there's a transition of, it's not just you anymore. You're not just thinking about you. You're, you're thinking about the other person and, oh, what do they want to do? What do they want to eat for dinner? What do they, where do they want to go? What activities do they want to be doing? And when you're single, you just don't have to think about this. Yeah, things. you have to put more thought into it. Yeah. Because you always have to think about the other person. Yeah. If you're doing But I definitely together. have to say, I mean, it's definitely worth it. Because mm-hmm. I like hanging out with you. Yeah, same. I like talking to you. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, who wears the pants in the relationship? I don't know. That's hard to say. I feel like that do- the question doesn't, doesn't really, really fit come us. Up. Yeah. I feel like neither one of us wear the pants because I feel like we're... I think we... we both have areas where we take the lead. Like for me, it's it's like cooking, grocery shopping, or at least deciding what to, what to make. <laughs> Because you... everyone's gonna say, Holly, that should be your job. Right. <laughs> Frank is a really good cook. So, I mean, he has a lot of, he, he makes a lot of good food. So, mm-hmm. I won't take the, you know, away from you or whatever. Yeah. But I think it, recognizing things where you're better at something than someone else, mm-hmm. it's not really, I don't know, we don't really think about it that way. Like, who decides what? Yeah, we don't keep score or anything crazy like that. Like, oh, well, he did this, so, you know, oh, you should do this. We don't really think about that. We just kind of work as a team. Mm -hmm. And we just, we, each one of us has different strengths in other areas. And so we kind of just, like, 
take care of you know everything on our on our each of our own and then together it kind of just works mm -hmm. i don't know how to explain that right but yeah yeah um what's the favorite date that you've ever been on Ooh, that would be miami that was a fun date yeah that was, that was the first trip that, or the the first thing we did together, really, mm -hmm. and without other people. Yeah, without yeah. anyone else like around. It was just like yeah. him and I doing mm -hmm. like a, a little thing, and so that was really fun. And mm -hmm. we went to this Italian restaurant in Miami, and it was just very romantic, very cute. And that was at the end of the trip. And mm -hmm. I remember like going on the trip. Um, I remember the long, the longer the trip was, the more I grew more fond of Frank and the more I just really enjoyed his company and talking to you and all of that. So just, mm -hmm. it was a very yeah. nice, uh, it was like, I really like Frank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was also nice to, um, do it in kind of a neutral environment because neither one of us lived in Miami. So it was, we did a lot of exploring too. Mm -hmm. to, Places we hadn't been there, a little, so a little, little Miami touring around. Keys yep. adventure. Yep. So that was that was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Um, if you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? For me, it has to be spaghetti mm -hmm. or chicken noodle. I have to probably spaghetti. Yeah. I'm a sucker for like a really good, authentic Italian spaghetti. What about you? Well, if it's something that I would love to eat, but I shouldn't eat every day, it would be like a nice steak. But more realistically, it'd probably be something like, yeah, like pasta. With a nice you sauce. and your steak, Frank. He loves yep. it. He loves the steak, but he's cutting back for his health. <laughs> um, What's your favorite we... steak if you could have one? Oh, I always get the the six or eight ounce filet because is there a certain the sauce you like what's your favorite i like peppercorn like a brunei yeah. sauce yeah those are good but you i try to get a smaller one because i can't really finish the big ones anyway so yeah but that's just the smaller price, ones make yeah. more sense um let's see what annoys you the most about one another well there's not many things that annoy me about frank because Again, you're just an amazing person, and uh, there's just I don't I'm not annoyed by you. This was one of the the first things I noticed about not one of the first things, but typically in my past when it came to guys or meeting guys or dating or whatever, like I was usually very annoyed with the guys. Like I wouldn't even last a couple minutes speaking to them because I was just so annoyed with them, and I can't even put my finger on why, but. I never had that with you, Frank. I was mm -hmm. never annoyed with you. I was never annoyed with hanging out with you, talking to you, anything like that. Um, still to this day, you do not annoy me. I enjoy my time with you. I'm sad when you're not around, that kind of thing. Obviously, I can, I'm doing my own thing, but I'm excited when you know, you're home from a work trip or whatever. Anyways, um, I will say the only thing that probably drives me a little bit crazy, you already know what I'm going to say, <laughs> is Frank doesn't really close containers of things, which is fine, but with certain things like, you know, chips or something, like they go stale if you don't close the bag, or if food is left out, it'll go bad or get stale, and so that's just not one of Frank's strong points, but... I don't think of him any less over it. I just close the bag for him when I see it and I don't say anything. I just take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, for you, I guess you're not always the most organized person. <laughs> I am not organized. It is true. So that's... I'm making valiant efforts in the new year to be a little bit more organized. Yeah. I've been, I've been doing well. I'm proud of myself yeah. with where yeah. I've come. Yeah. Or how far I've come. The closet organization is getting a lot better. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of clothes and stuff rolling in and so out of here. So I guess for both of us it's related to storage. Yeah. <laughs> storage related We need to improve our, our organization and yeah. our storage. <laughs> um, do you cave into junk food? And if so, what is it? Well, we've kind of already covered that. With, um, yeah, our favorite chips. Chips and things. And things. Yeah. 
Um, I like um, mint ice cream too. It's so good. It's mm -hmm. so and then I guess it's not really junk food per se, but we like to have some wine and cheese. Mm -hmm. but, but it has to be like that really good Italian good Italian cheese. style cheese, the harder type cheese. Yeah, the more crystallized mm -hmm. natural cheese. So good. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to others going through a dating season in their life? Uh, well, probably respect, but also don't, there's not really a formula that works for everybody because every mm -hmm. person's different. So you, there are some basics guidelines that one should probably go by, but at the same time, you kind of have to figure out who, who you are as a person and who the other person is and what works best for you because people might have all sorts of suggestions, but that's not necessarily going to apply to you. So you have, there's a part of it that you also have to figure out for yourself. And for I think yourself that people should trouble. be happy. I think people should focus on the, themselves their goals that they they want to have, what they want their life to be. I think people should mm -hmm. strive to work towards that, what's going to make them happy. And then the right person will fall in line at some point, you know, later on or down the road or whatever. You might meet them, you know, at a networking event if, you were, if you're working on goals for yourself in your career. Or you just never know where you're going to meet somebody. And so I feel like you need to be making steps to make yourself happy. And mm -hmm. then... You can meet someone along the way who fits into your life and is a good addition to your life, but you never want to focus on dating somebody to make you happy. I think that's where people get it twisted is because you want to be good on your own mm -hmm. and then you can find somebody to compliment you in your life and it will fit nicely. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people kind of approach dating wrong. And then they end up unhappy. Yeah. And I think it's also important to stress to each other what's important to you. Like there's, you know, fundamental topics that you want to agree on. Like the kind of life you want to lead to, as you get further down the road. So you should mm -hmm. not be shy to discuss, you know more serious topics because you should know is that are the major points in your life and how you want that to evolve some, is that something you agree on or that you don't agree on I agree um, because if you don't talk about that then, then you're kind of like you don't know you yeah, yeah you don't know and then you're actually asking for a disaster later on because and then you're emotionally involved in all of these things when if you just spoke about it right away, you'd figure out that, okay, well, we want different things in life, and so this might not end Which well. is fine. And that's you know, fine, yeah. Has their own... It's just more of finding, you know, the person that fits what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And the final question, where do you want to travel to? Ooh, Italy, France. That's definitely on the list. I would also love to do Greece, uh, Santorini, the Amalfi Coast area. I think that's like um, the main areas for me mm -hmm. in the near future. Not super near, but you know, places I would love to go to mm -hmm. within you know the next five to ten years of my life would be those places. Yeah, I'd like to go to Dubai. So I've never been there. Ooh, I, actually, Dubai is also on my list. Mm -hmm. Dubai looks so cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could have like a Miami date in Dubai. Yeah. Like, just the, redo Miami, but in but Dubai. There. Yeah. Like a Dubai and Miami. When it's not too hot. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Gotta go in the winter. Yeah, Dubai looks like a lot of fun. Anyway, so that's our Q&A. That's the Q&A. Thank you all for joining us. We hope that this was informative, informative and fun for, those for that you. Care. <laughs> for those that care, yeah. yeah. Thank you for your questions. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for your questions. We love you all. Have yeah. a great night. Have a great day, night, whatever you're watching Whatever this. time it happens yeah. to be for you. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.